the folks are watching TV. I still think we ought to tell them. No, Pete, you promised. Let me break the ice. Okay, but make sure you do a good job of it. Don't worry, I will. Good night. come in. I didn't think you'd be up this late. I wouldn't have, except your mother got me trapped in the late show. Oh, don't you believe him? You know your father in a western. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Oh, wonderful. Good. Well, I think I'm going to hit the hay. Dad? Mm -hmm. I, um, I've got something to tell you and mother. Oh, what is it, dear? Well, uh, well, Pete and I, we, uh, well, he proposed to me tonight, and I said yes. Uh, you and uh, Pete want to get married? I had no idea there was anything serious. I didn't tell you before because I wasn't sure myself. But I know for sure now that we do love each other. Well, I have to admit that uh, Pete is a fine boy. Oh, yes, he certainly is. But he's not a Catholic, is that it? Well, Jane, we want you to be happy. Look, I know you're going to say that I ought to marry a Catholic. But Pete is very considerate, very understanding. We have so much in common. I, I just know that our marriage is going to work out wonderfully. Oh, well, dear, it's true that sometimes Protestant and Catholic marriages do seem to work out, as you put it. But there are so many things to be taken into consideration. Mother, don't you think I've thought about those things? But we're in love. Now, that's most important, isn't it? Well, honey, I, I, I think you ought to talk this over with Father Manning. Yes, just to make sure you really understand what's involved. I intend to. But I'm sure that nothing Father Manning could say would change the way I feel about Pete. Hey, you're just in time. How about joining us? No, thanks, sis. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, never felt better. We just got home from the young married couple's party at the church. How was your date? Well, it was wonderful. I asked Jane to marry me. Marry you? You're kidding. <laughs> well, what's wrong about that? Well, nothing, Pete. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> sure, it's, uh, Jane's a swell girl. But I didn't realize you were that serious. Well, it's quite simple. We're in love, we want to get married. And Jane said yes. She's all for it. So, just as soon as she breaks the news to her folks. What'll they say about her marrying a Protestant? Well, they're reasonable people. They know we'll work it out somehow. I don't think it's going now to look, be... Now, look. Tell me I'm going to start getting objections from you. Well, it's your life, Pete. And I mean it when I say I like Jane. She's a wonderful person. But she's a Roman Catholic. Is that what you're really trying to say? Pete, as your brother-in-law, this, is, uh, this isn't my affair. Whatever you want to do, that's, that's up to you. But one of the reasons that Betty and I have been so happy is that we've been able to share the things matter most. We have nothing against Jane. But, well, you're a Protestant. What'll Mom and Dad say? I don't know, sis. I'm gonna get a letter off to them right away. Haven't you ever told them about Jane? Of course. Perhaps not about our being serious, but I'm sure they'll understand. After all, Jane and I worship the same God. That's not the point. Well, what is? No matter how much you and Jane love each other, you'd never really become one spiritually. There'd always be a barrier. You know how much our church means to us. Our beliefs, the way we worship, the things we do together. Jane and I realize this isn't the ideal setup. Look at all the people who have opposite convictions about lots of things and are still happily married. All it takes is some intelligence and a little mutual understanding. 
Well, thanks. Thanks anyway for the advice. I think I'll start that letter to the folks. What's with you two now that graduation's over and you're out in the cruel, cold world? Well, first we're thinking of getting married. You are? Hey, how about that? Congratulations. Hey, listen, anytime you want any advice from a couple of old pros, maybe we'll take you up on that. Right now. Advice we need. Oh? Problems? Yeah, religion. How did you two work it out? Well, it wasn't easy. All my folks liked Evelyn all right, but they always figured I'd marry a Jewish girl, you know? My family acted like it was the end of the world or something. I think by now they can see that we've worked it out all right, though. Right, honey? I think so. Uh-oh. Mm, the visitor's bell? Afraid so. When will you be going home? Uh, not for another day. It'll take me at least that long to wash all the dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor says I can go home day after tomorrow. You come on over. We will. Nice seeing you, dear. Thank you for coming. Thanks Bye -bye. for the flowers. Goodbye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Pete, promise me that you won't get into an argument. Honey, I don't want to argue. Argue, but if any... Just promise me. Okay. Hello, Mother. Oh, hello, Pete. Miss Bella. We just got back from the hospital. Yes, we saw Evelyn and Dave. And the baby. Oh, I'll bet the baby's cute. Simply adorable. How's Evelyn? She's very happy. I'm glad. She's such a nice girl. Well, well, I guess I'd better be going. Pete, if you don't mind, I'd like to say something. Yes? Well, I think you know that both Jane's father and I like you personally very much. But we are rather concerned about Jane marrying a Protestant. Well, there would have to be a lot of adjustments. Well, we know that, Mrs. Sullivan. And you understand that there would be many things that Jane, as a Catholic, wouldn't be able to share with you? I suppose so. Well, just as there would be many things that you as a Protestant wouldn't be able to share with Jane. Mother Pete and I have gone into all this many times. Well, what I'm leading up to is that I think it's very important that Pete discuss this with Father Manning. To fully understand what's necessary if you marry each other. Well, of course, there'd be no problem, Pete, if you'd agree to become a Catholic. I've been a Protestant all my life. But I will talk to Father Manning. He's very nice, Pete. You'll like him. I've known the Sullivans for many years. And I don't blame you for falling in love with Jane. She's a wonderful girl. There's no argument there. And I wish that I could tell you to go ahead and get married and everything would be fine. But speaking quite frankly, there are a number of things that both of you must face. That's why I'm here. First of all, assuming that you intend to remain a Protestant, you'd have to agree to certain conditions before you could be married in the church. So Jane has said. Did she explain these conditions to you? Well, in a general way, I understand our children might have to be raised as Catholic. Yes, they would. That would be a prime obligation. Now, here's a copy of the pre-marriage agreement that you'd have to sign. Your children would have to be baptized and educated in the Roman Catholic faith. You see, Pete, 
even with this agreement, our church believes that mixed marriages are not good. We believe that marriage, if it is to be as God intended, should be a complete union, physical and spiritual. And in the case of a mixed marriage, we hope that the non-Catholic partner will be converted. As a matter of fact, that's one of the requirements that Jane will have to agree to. She must do everything in her power to bring you to her faith. And you, of course, will have to take a course of instructions. That sounds reasonable enough. I'd like to know more about what Jane believes. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. And I'd like her to know more about my church. She could attend a pastor's class with me. Well, I'm sorry, Pete, but under our rules, that would be impossible. Well, what would happen if... Well, if Jane and I didn't sign this? Well, Jane could not be married in the church, and uh, the marriage would not be recognized. But if we were married by my pastor or a, a justice of peace, it would be legal, wouldn't it? No, not in the eyes of our church. And if Jane took part in such a marriage, she'd be considered by us to be living in a state of sin. Now, Pete, I don't mean to be harsh. This is a very serious step that you and Jane are considering. At best, a mixed marriage is a dangerous thing. That's why we try to safeguard it, by insisting that the Catholic partner's faith be maintained. I see what you mean. I'll give you some literature to take home and study. guide you and Jane in making a wise decision. Well, I'll say one thing for this literature Father Manning gave me. It lays it right on the line. I don't know, maybe it's a good idea to put everything down in black and white before marriage. That way both parties know exactly where they stand. That's just it. Where would you stand? What do you mean? If two people getting married have to sign an agreement as to what they can't share, especially about such a personal thing as their spiritual life, isn't that just building a wall between them even before they get married? It depends. I think it's how you live and let live. Mm, I think it's much more than that. Couples in love usually want to go to church together. It's an important part of the experience of being married. Sis, I'm sure there are going to be plenty of other things we can share together. Do you realize that Jane could never attend a service with you in your church? Why? Well, it's one of the rules of her church. And if your children are raised as Catholics, they could never attend a service with you in your church. But we'd have each other, that's the main thing. But you wouldn't have each other, not all of each other. Okay, so families ought to go to church together. Oh, it's more than just going to church together. There'd be so many, many things that you wouldn't be able to share together, like grace at mealtimes and, and family prayers with your children, having the same church friends. I can tell you from my own experience that our marriage is complete because Craig and I share the same faith in Christ. I know there's a lot in what you say, but it... Please, Pete. For yours and Jane's sake, go see the pastor. Okay? All right. I know it's not going to make any difference. I know how you feel. Just out of college, with all the uncertainties and challenges ahead. Come to know a very fine girl. And you're in love. That seems to be the most important thing in the world. Right. Pete, I, I've known you since you started high school. And I'd like to see you do the thing that's best for you. I'm sure you realize that marriage is a very serious step. Of course I do. But I can't see that it's as complicated as some people make it out to be. Well, that depends. There can be many complications in, in a mixed marriage. Basically, it's like any other marriage. From it will come love, companionship, a home, and children. 
Now let's analyze these things in terms of what you would get from a mixed marriage. I think you'll agree that love is not only physical, it's mental and spiritual too. And if your married partner does not share your own faith, then she cannot completely share the spiritual aspect of love. Therefore, you both would be missing something important. As to companionship in a home, here again in a mixed marriage, partners can never really enjoy complete companionship or a united home life. Pastor, I know, but it, it just doesn't seem that important. Both Jane and I are reasonable people. We respect each other's differences. And our marriage would be built on mutual respect. Pete, how many times have I heard a fine young person like yourself contemplating a mixed marriage state these same convictions? And how many times I've seen their homes break up? But Jane and I are different. But the facts remain the same. Statistics show that mixed marriages have more than twice as many separations and divorces as families with the same religious faith. Well, there's always the chance that Jane may see things as I do religiously. It would be your obligation, Pete, to try to bring about her conversion, just the same as it would be her obligation to try to convert you to Roman Catholicism. Well, I still think Jane and I can work things out. All right. Let's discuss this from another aspect. Children. I know what you're going to say about my having to agree to let them be raised in the Roman Catholic Church. You can go further than that, Pete. What about raising a family? Planning on how many children you'll have? What do you mean? Well, truly responsible parenthood, intelligent planning for children, might be impossible. I hadn't realized that. Another thing, one of a parent's most solemn responsibilities to a child is to give that child the best spiritual heritage that he or she knows. As a Protestant, it's your duty to rear your children in your faith. As a Catholic, it's Jane's duty to bring up the children in her church. It goes without saying, this can lead to discord. But worse than that, it could lead to both of you giving up your church life and rearing your children with no faith. just a little while ago. I was talking to Evelyn. She wants us to come over and see the baby. She sounds like the happiest person on earth. I'm glad somebody feels good. What's the matter? Well, it's that talk I had with Pastor Wadsworth. Why can't we work out our own problems? I talked to Father Manning today, too. Between him and my folks, I'm just about ready to elope to a South Sea island. <laughs> sounds like a good idea. What are you doing tonight? My folks insist that I go to some parish affair with them. But tomorrow afternoon, let's go over and see Evelyn. Right. Bye, hon. I love you. And I love you. Won't you come in? Thank you. David asked me to drop over. Well, he went to the store, but he'll be right back. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, how's the baby? Oh, fine, thank you. I just got him to sleep. 
You must be very happy, the both of you. I know David was bursting with pride when he phoned me about arranging the breasts. The... the what? Uh, the breasts. Hasn't David discussed it with you? No. Well, that's why I'm here, I thought. I don't quite understand. What do you mean, a bris? Well, the bris is the circumcision ceremony performed on boys of the Jewish faith the eighth day following their birth. I thought you knew. Oh, I've heard about it, I guess. But Dave and I, we've never discussed such things very much. Well, it's a holy covenant dating back to the days of Abraham. And your husband would like now to keep that tradition with his son. I wish David said something to me. I mean... Hello, Rabbi. Hello, David. Dave, the Rabbi was just talking about the bris. Well, yeah, I, uh, I meant to tell you about it, honey, um, Perhaps it would be better if I come back later. Thanks, Rabbi. Before I leave, I'd like to point out that because you are of different faiths, you face new problems as parents that can be solved only by mutual love and understanding. Mrs. Levine, listen to David. Consider carefully what his faith means to him in this matter of the bris. And David, you must be understanding with your wife. Call me when you'd like me to come back. I'm anxious to help in any way I can. Goodbye, Rabbi. I'm sorry. I meant to talk it over with you, honey. I don't want this kind of a ceremony. Honey? After all, he's my son, too. What do you want me to do? Forget I'm a Jew? Forget this is one of our most sacred traditions? But what about my faith? Honey, remember when we got married, we promised we'd never fight about religion. All right, then. Let's forget this, this bris. I can't. My parents wouldn't understand. What about my parents? It's taken us all this time to get them and your folks to even be friendly. But something like this would just put things wide open again. Now look, Evelyn, I've given in to you on everything religious. For all practical purposes, I've lived my life as if I weren't a Jew. But this ceremony with my firstborn son, it's deep, it's part of my roots. Can't you understand? The only thing I can understand is if we start out with this Jewish ceremony for our son, it's the beginning of something, something between us. Well, maybe the wall's already there and we just haven't admitted it, huh? Perhaps you're right. around. How you feeling? Oh, okay, I guess. Come on in. Is something the matter, Evelyn? Maybe we should come back later. No, please stay. I, I've got to talk to somebody. What's happened, dear? Nothing yet. Who would ever think a little baby would lead to this? Lead to what, Evelyn? Our first quarrel. Over religion. I can't get over it. Yeah. Perhaps Father Manning was right. He said that it all narrowed down to certain choices. A husband and wife could stay active in their own churches. 
Or one of them could change faith. Or both could give up their faith. Which I could never do. Or both could accept a third faith. Together. Could you? No. Could you? No. Father Manny had one final choice. He said that people do recover from being in love. And while it could be terrible at first, it would be easier than all the heartaches we might have if we did get married. Is that what you want to do? Call it off? No. Darling, no, I love you. So what do we do? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'll go to Mass. Thank you. 